there's two. Oh, this one's huge, though. Oh, hey. Holy cow, these are some big toads. Let's see if I can extract them carefully. Whoa, perfect. This is exactly what I was looking for. Check it out. Now these, as you probably know, oh man, look at these guys go. And they're peeing all over me. No, that's disgusting. You guys, why? Don't do that, I'm trying to teach people about you. A few moments later. Now these, oh, I caught it, I caught it. Oh, he's still peeing though. <laughs> all right, let's get a better grip. More moments later. Now these, as you probably know, are toads. But recently I discovered that there's lots of common misconceptions about toads floating around the internet. And the first thing I want to clear the air on is what even is a toad? Is it a reptile? Is it an amphibian? Is it something else? And the answer might actually surprise you. Toads are indeed frogs. They are just a type of frog usually characterized by drier skin, usually with some kind of bumpy texture, and shorter, less powerful hind legs than the rest of the frog family. Now there are many things that make toads special, but one of those things is an ability to survive in much drier and much more terrestrial conditions than most other kinds of frog. The bumpy skin that toads are famous for actually helps lock in moisture. And while these animals do still have to remain pretty moist to stay alive, they can live on pretty much dry land, whereas most other frogs have to be either in or very close to a body of water in order to survive. Now, another thing that makes toads interesting is these glands that you see right behind the eyes on their neck here. Now, that is the parotoid gland, and that actually excretes a pretty potent toxin known as a bufotoxin. But those bufotoxins, when excreted, kind of look like milk, and they are actually capable of killing many potential predators of these toads. But other than those toxic secretions, toads do not really have any defensive mechanisms for dealing with predators. They do have exceptional camouflage, and they are really good at staying hidden, but they are not incredibly fast, and they can't bite or sting or do anything like that. So predators that have found a way to work around the bufotoxins are able to make a pretty quick meal of a toad. Now these ones that I found right here I think are actually two different species even though they were sharing the same log. This toad has multiple bumps in every splotch which makes it a fowler's toad whereas this one, the huge one, has only one bump per splotch which makes it an American toad. Now both these species are common throughout the southeastern US and I think both of them range throughout almost the entire state of North Carolina. They do prefer forested areas because it provides leaf litter, soil, and moisture, but they can also be found in urban and suburban areas. Basically anywhere there's insects and somewhere to hide during the day, you can find toads. Like many other frogs, toads have explosive breeding events. So during the early spring, usually around April here in North Carolina, hundreds or sometimes thousands of toads will gather at suitable bodies of water, usually somewhere relatively shallow like a creek or a pond, they will all breed together and they will lay thousands if not millions of eggs. Now a very, very small percentage of those eggs will actually make it to adulthood because lots of aquatic organisms like to eat the eggs and the baby toads when they hatch. But once they get to this size, they do have enough bufotoxins to ward off any predators that don't have specific mechanisms for detoxifying these animals when they are consumed. So ecologically, toads are important secondary consumers. They are primarily insectivorous, and they'll prey on all kinds of soft-bodied invertebrates, maybe even smaller amphibians if they were given the chance. Like most other frogs, if they can fit it in their mouth, they will probably try and eat it. But they are still prey for things like hognose snakes, which are very rare, and have found a way to bypass those toxins. Now one final thing I do want to talk about is toads and warts. Can you get warts by touching a toad? And the answer is no. You cannot get warts from touching a toad. There is absolutely no research that suggests that it is possible. And the worst thing that can happen to you if you do touch a toad is it will pee on you, probably, because they do seem to love to pee on me every time I pick them up. Just make sure you don't eat them unless you are immune to bufotoxins.
These two toads have been a joy to work with. I think they are totally adorable and they have a bad reputation for being these kind of nasty little things that are used in all kinds of potions and give you warts. But actually, they're just a special type of frog that is very well adapted for life on the land and an important part of our terrestrial ecosystems. And we'll go ahead and get these two beautiful toads right back in the wild. You are free to go. Thanks for the help. Why did you not go in your log? Okay, we can go over there. Thanks so much for checking out today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed, and I look forward to seeing you on our next adventure. Until then, stay safe and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.